Hello everybody, it's Fiona Hooper here and I'm back again for my weekly instalment of the Poetry of Painting. So uh, I think I've got everything just about dried out now from last Saturday's rather wet day at Kingston on Thames. Uh, it was actually so bad that we actually packed up early, which is almost unheard of for us, but there was a break in the rain and we thought it's a good good time to take advantage of that and get packed up. So still had to um, dry everything out when I got home, but anyway, that got done. So, um, anyway, but during one of the downpours on Saturday, it was really lovely to see tonight's guest, um, guest poet stop by for a chat. And uh, so joining me this week is Oscar Nicholson, who had been writing a poem about this week's painting when he was studying at the previous Kingston show. And I really liked his style and what he'd written. So here he is. Let me bring him in. Hi, Oscar. How are you? Hi, how are you? Sorry, I'm trying to... Can you hear me? I'm good. Yeah, I can hear you. How, how are you doing? Sorry, I don't know if the audio is... Okay. Oh, no, I can't hear you now. Could hear you to start with. No. Unplug and plug in again. We need you on. <laughs> just take the just take the earphones off. Take unplug them. These little techie things are just sent to try us. You tried unplugging them. No? No, nope, can't hear you. Just go out and come back in. Well, so we have a little techie issue here this week. Um, don't often get them, but uh, that's the wonders of modern technology for you. So never mind. Um, I'm sure we'll get Oscar back in just a minute. So. We'll wait to see if he comes back in because so I'm really dying to to hear his poem because what he'd written when he was standing there looking at my painting before um, he sent to me and it was really lovely so um, I'm just waiting to hear the full poem but uh, otherwise I'll have to read you mine and we'll get Oscars on when he manages to get back in um, so fingers crossed but let me let me do things in the different order today then and I will read well I'll tell you about the painting first anyway um so the painting which I'll bring on is called Venice Dreams and it's actually in ink and oils on canvas um but 50 by 50 centimeters so uh, that's what you can see there and that's the painting about which we have both written the poem so no, we still don't have Oscar back on at the moment. So I will read my poem anyway. And then we'll go back to Oscar, hopefully, once he's on the call. So my poem, surprisingly, not surprisingly, is called Venice Dreams. And it's as follows. A mysterious mist, a tender cocoon of vapour, soft and enveloping, shrouding the city at dawn, pearlescent droplets reflecting the roseate glow as the sun awaits its appointed hour to be born. The cool, moist miasma rising from the water, blanketing, muffling and deadening sound, masks a distant voice from an unseen source. From where did it come and where is it bound? Water laps lazily at the ancient wooden posts, responding to the barely perceptible swell. Sheltered from the ocean in this shallow lagoon, where traders and merchants elected to dwell. The quiet engines thrum of some passing boat, cautiously crossing through the shifting veils, nosing slowly forwards, scanning the silver cloud, full knowing in slowness that safety prevails. 
Soon now the sun will ascend from its sleep. The light will gleam on the tall gilded towers. The mist metamorphose into a beautiful city. Venice dreams giving way to its daylight hours. So that's my poem. Oh, Martin, hi, I see you on. Yes, poor Oscar. I'm sure he's going a bit frantic at the moment trying to get back on, but uh, hopefully he will do. And we shall find out a bit more about him. So uh, fingers crossed. Um, Oscar's actually an English lit student at Durham University going into his third year there. And I should tell you a little bit more about him, even though you can't see him at the moment. Um, he's, he's already been working on a collection of poetry, which he's hoping to get published in due course. And I'm hoping to read as well. Um, that'd be rather nice. So uh, just hoping. Oh, lively words again, Fiona. Thank you, Martin. Hope you enjoyed it. It's, uh, it was an interesting one to write, actually, because it it just was so evocative of being there, you know, in the early dawn when I was there painting and, um, you know, get up really early and it's it's quiet. There's hardly any tourists about and it was misty and and just so atmospheric and and that the photographs that I took didn't really show that properly. Um, you couldn't really see that, you know, get a, a real idea of the atmosphere there. So, but it was all in my head and I painted from that spot as well, but not um, at that time. Well, the one I did at that time of day was a study, but not a, a full painting. And I just decided to do it in quite a, a sort of loose um, way. Um, a little bit different from my normal style. And uh, yeah, I was pleased with the way it came out. And it actually sold at Kingston a couple of weeks ago now, which is really lovely. The lady just loved it. And I took it round after the show and saw where it was going on the wall. And it, it did look really good. She was so pleased. And it's lovely when a painting ends up with somebody who's just thrilled to have it, like um, C. Green Martin with uh, Anne. So I was so pleased that she had that because she loved it so much. So um, yes, but trying to trying to convey that atmosphere in the painting, it went through quite a few stages and metamorphosed as well as in the poem um, with different layers. It started off with some of the with, with the mooring posts there, there were wooden walkways between them and it started off with some walkways in, but it just felt too heavy at the bottom of the painting. So I decided to take those out and, and it had various layers put on over the top to give it that misty feel. And the background is even, it's, it's all oils where the paint is. It's just a little bit of outline around the buildings with ink. Um, but it's, I actually got the, the oil to run down. I just like that sort of uh, drippy, runny background to it, um, some of which then got hidden underneath the water. But um, yeah, I th think it worked quite well, actually. So obviously somebody else liked it a lot to, well, two people, a, a to write a poem about it and uh, another person to buy it, which was a real thrill. It's, it's always a thrill selling a painting. Um, I think however many I sell, selling another one is, is just so exciting and, and affirming. So, um, oh, Martin, love the atmosphere, so understated, but quite haunting. Thank you. Yes, um, it, it had that real feel about it because it was a bit otherworldly because of the mist, you know, and, and normally Venice is such a bustling place. I don't know um, if you've been, but it's it's bustling and the boats and the vaporettos, gondolas, I think, going, you know, all going around the whole time. And obviously the tourists, of which I was one, of course, but, um, uh, you know, it, it was lovely early morning just to have it quiet and peaceful and, you know, just just to be there and absorb the atmosphere. And so that was really good. Um, so it doesn't look like Oscar's going to be able to get back on and join us, unfortunately. Um, so that's rather disappointing because I really want to hear his poem. Um, if he can get back on, 
what I might do is just contact him and just see what's happening just in case he can get back on um because it would be lovely to share that let me just send him a message um but um yeah so that's the story of the painting and um i think it made a difference as well the frame that I found for it recently, it just, it really set it off really well. And um, it looked, even though I say it myself, it looked good. Um, if I didn't think it looked good, I wouldn't have had it on sale anyway. So yeah, one, I think an artist should, should feel that their painting looks good, not perfect, but oh, here, Oscar's saying, won't let him turn on his camera or microphone at all. Um, let's see if he can use his phone. He may be able to, and then get him back on, which would be lovely if we can get him back on. Um, and Oscar's very happy as well for me to share his poem afterwards. Hopefully we can hear it in the meantime. And uh, he's also very keen for his poem to be in my book, which I'm still really excited about and uh, he's going to try his phone so let's hope he can get back on in a minute um and now getting quite a lot of material already for the book uh, martin's poems will be in there as well excellent and i know martin's got another painting of mine in mind for writing another poem which is exciting because i I just love hearing other people's interpretation of my paintings in poetry. And um, it's it's so fascinating to hear the different take on it, the different things that people pick up on um, and the way that it speaks to them as opposed to what I see in it, which is from, you know, my point of view is I've painted it in the first place as well. So I've got a bit more background um, but it's it's just amazing and and such such an honor to have people write poetry about my work. it's it's just lovely. so um, right, Oscar's still not with us just yet. We'll just give him another minute or two. Um, I'll just remind anybody if you want to join my VIP mailing list to get my newsletter, which goes out about once a month so you won't get bombarded with emails. If you just go onto my website, www.fionahooper.com, and you can sign up to my newsletter on there. Oh, Oscar's coming back. That's excellent. Well, hello, can you hear me now? Here he is. I can hear you, and you're on screen. Welcome uh, back, Oscar. Wow, I'm so sorry been, about that. No, it, it happens. It happens. Don't worry. I was just so yeah. disappointed that I haven't heard your poem yet. But I have read mine, so you haven't heard mine at the moment, but um, I would love to hear yours and then find out a bit more about you. So are well, you ready to read your poem for us? I am. I am. I'd love to. Well, because, brilliant. Um, I got cut out. I didn't get to say thanks for having me, but thank you so much. <laughs> so that goes without saying. And technology is what it is as we all know absolutely yeah okay happens to us all it does it does okay yeah. so i believe the the painting is called venice dreams am i right in saying that it is absolutely yes so i titled the poem the same way and because i like writing shorter poems this poem is short but let's well i'll just say and see what you guys think okay yeah excellent hazy whispers of silhouetted brilliance Structural plentitude etched with fragrant shadows. A drooping mist scrubs those lines, frontiers and rooted foundations, evoking a silent majesty that seeps, sleeps within a cracking, glorious fog. Receptive, speechless, fixed in a central perspective, the longing eye casts a teary look, hooked away from its squirming travels by this ripple of emerging order. Projected passions and bottled thoughts, those dreams that swirl within, split and aimlessly disperse, are refracted into a hopeful illumination, carved and smoothed by each point, outline and jutting pole. Every border, every contour, a watchful prism, 
tunneling chaotic cares into a discernible vision. And that's that's what I've got. Wow. That's beautiful. Oh, love I'm it. Glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, I did. Really lovely. Yeah. I I've just I've been saying how amazed I am and, and honored at the poetry that my guest poets have written about my work, you know, my paintings and some just some beautiful poetry from from everybody, yourself included now, which is great. So um I'm looking forward to you doing more poems about my work and coming back on the show in due oh, course as well. So uh, so now I think it's time, I think people have heard enough from me a little bit at the moment, so it's time to find out a little bit more about you, Oscar, if you'd just like to tell us a bit about yourself and because you're studying English Lit, I've told yeah. people. Um, you've obviously got, you know, you're partial to poetry yeah. um, as well. So. You know, how did you come to choose English Lit and do you, do you specialise in poetry? So just right, open over to you. Well, um, yeah, so I'm third year at Durham English Lit. We're going into third year and enjoying it mostly. Some parts are better than others, as all degrees are. But I've always, I guess, um, this is how I came to poetry as well. I don't know if you got it from what you heard there, but I'm very I've always been really interested in words, language and how different yeah. words convey different things to different people. How a word yeah. is almost like, they can only, for me, like poetry and words only ever suggest, they can never, they can never tell. And anyone get infinite suggestions, interpretations, regardless of what I'm trying to say. So I guess poetry for me is about finding the right words, not the answers. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess that, that ties into my analysis of poems and literature. And I've always been interested in the nitty gritty detail. I've always been worse with English at like the general broad thematic stuff. I mean, that's the stuff you've got to learn, but I've always loved really microanalyzing prose and poetry. So I came to poetry because it was during lockdown, actually. I used to write a bit, but nothing really serious. And it started off as just kind of because obviously, as we know, lockdown was hard for everyone. Um, mm. yeah. And so was COVID. But um, so it started off as just, a way to sort of come to terms with this like fog I'd have in my brain um, mm. and it was almost a therapeutic exercise just it started on notes on my iPhone just scribbling down various words that just seemed to flow out and those were the early stages and then I started gradually I wouldn't show anyone because I was embarrassed I was like okay who's going to see this and then I gradually started showing my friends who are like literarily inclined or mm. know me and they're like you know this is actually this is okay you should like people actually got this and I was like, wow, OK. Um, and I just started to just write more and more. And that's where I saw the, this collection I've got now. I don't know if you said, but um, it's just mm, a collection I've of hinted poems. about it. Oh, thank yeah. you. But poems that just started off as sort of a, I'd run with a general theme. So the title would be a random word I'd be thinking at that time and then run with it and then look at it the next day and sort of edit it a bit with a more critical eye. And so that was that and I showed that to a few friends expecting nothing expecting just like okay just have a look see what you think and some people thought it wasn't awful they they enjoyed it so and then yeah and then that that's where we are now so it's only really been a year or so since I've started writing mm. it but it's something I I really enjoy and would love to keep doing yeah excellent well Martin said great words Oscar so and Martin's oh, poetry you. is beautiful as well so that's that's good praise very good so uh, yeah and i i think that was incredible loved your poem um it, it, so have you i know you're fairly new to it the same as some of my other guests have been um yeah. have you have you been getting involved in like any of the online oh, noise that online poetry groups and things like that or have you just been so basically working on your own so far i haven't yet but that's something i'm keen to do because i'm i'm someone who it takes a lot for me to promote myself. Like, I, mm. um, it takes a lot for me to a accept that what I write is good. B show someone. C put my work out there. So, the f I'm, when I say I'm new to it, I've been writing for a while, but I'm very new to the idea that I might actually want people to see this as well. So that's yeah. something I really want to do. But it's just about finding the right, the right people and reaching out to the right people. Mm. And I guess yeah. the fact that how how we met each other was like a, a big step because it was just it's amazing how coincidence were like that just just talking Absolutely. to people is the way to go, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and it does get easier trying to promote yourself. Um, I 
you know, I found that very difficult to start with, that, you know, was brought up to sort of, a, you know, don't be big headed and, you know, don't sort of push yourself. And, but you, you know, when you're doing this sort of thing, you know, poetry or art or whatever, you have to be a little bit out there. You have to, you know, promote yourself because, you know, basically to start with at least, you're lucky if anybody else will do it so you've just got to get on and do it but it does get easier mm. um and you know as we're showing paintings you know you'll get more confident as you go um you know because from from what i've heard of your poetry so far i you know it you don't need to be shy about it whatsoever it's, it's thank you that really means a lot so, thank you. you know just you just got to do it and it it can seem a bit sort of foreign to me being self-promoting but you know it it is important if you're going to get it out there you know it's it's not you, you may get a lucky break but a lot of luck is hard work basically yeah you um, make your own luck don't you absolutely the harder i work the luckier i get you know all that sort of thing and and it is true you know you've you've got to put in the work um it's very rare that somebody gets discovered and um you know you, it, generally it's it's the work you put in but when you're doing it for yourself yeah it's and it's something that you love doing it it is work but it's not it's not like hard work or working for some at some job that you don't enjoy particularly or it's not you know doing your yeah. you know not bringing you joy um feeding your soul or whatever so yeah it takes exactly. time and effort but mm it's worth it yeah exactly it's not it's not alienating it's it's mm. if you're working with something that you know you're only really battling with yourself which can be horrible and infuriating but at least you know you're getting somewhere that you want to get to rather than just yeah. slaving away monotonously to yeah so absolutely and and also if if something doesn't work it's a good opportunity to think okay that didn't work i'll learn from that i don't won't do that anymore I'll, look for a different way of doing it or something so it's you know when something goes wrong or doesn't work it's not it's not a failure it's a step exactly. on the trail to where you want to be you know you've just ruled out a you know a dead end or something you know so so uh it you need to be you need to have persistence and you need to persevere but if it's something that really is in your heart then that's what you need to do you know because mm. you're you know life so much nicer when you're doing what you love exactly um, yeah and i guess um so. as with art as you must know it's like you learn through obviously you've got to be true to yourself and remain authentic because mm. otherwise you're not being you who's going to want to read that but yeah. you learn through what other people say constructive criticism absolutely um, yeah yeah i mean you can always listen to criticism whether it's constructive or not hopefully constructive and then you take from it what resonates with you Mm. and disregard the rest if it if it doesn't fit with what you're doing you know but and we're all influenced by other people you know I'm influenced by other painters other artists not to copy what they're doing but to to take ideas and you think oh I love that color combination of that bit in someone's painting you know and just to just to um get inspiration rather than as I say it's not copying and, and mm. I'm sure it must be similar with poetry as well yeah. that you you read something and think wow love that and you don't want to you don't want to write like that person but there may be certain things that you might take from it exactly um, I'm um sure go back even to to just language itself I mean we all borrow terms no one makes up their own terms you get mm. indoctrinated into a language and then you just it's about how you use them really and exactly yes. like with, as you with painters um there are poets i i read and i love and then i guess when i try and write it just sort of it's like a pastiche of the way i interpret their stuff because it can only ever be me who synthesizes it all my influences and as long as i'm yes. authentic it doesn't matter if i'm borrowing or imitating because it's not gross imitation it's just channeled through me sort of thing yes and it'll have your your style on it as well yeah. so yeah yeah oh that's fascinating so when you you say when you start a poem you you often fix on a word to start with yeah and then sort of build around that yeah so it, it would 
it would usually be a, like a feeling, like a general mood I'd have inside. And mm-hmm. I'd try and put that into one word just as quickly as possible. N- try and bypass the rational self-conscious brain. Just write mm-hmm. it. And then that would be my prompt. So it's nice to, I've started, and this is case in point, using more paintings as visual prompts. It's the same sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, need, I like working with a prompt, whether that comes from my mood, a word, a painting, that generally sets me going. Yeah, yeah. And, and do you do you make notes of just words and phrases to start mm. with and then put it into some form, or do you sort of form it a bit in your head first? Um, I, I, I keep, um, so I've got my notes in my phone, and I've also just got a notebook that I keep general mm. ideas. That if I come with a, a nice phrase, a nice word a nice idea i'll just write down not put it in a poem so i can come to it for future reference and sometimes mm-hmm. i'll go back to those few lines and just think you know what there's something in this or i'll find something that's relevant to it or where it can be applied um but usually with me and this is just a personal preference some people the complete opposite i start with what i'm trying to say the words and then i build the syntax the the form the structure if if at all the rhyme from mm-hmm. there um, yeah, but some people work the complete opposite way, and that's just how people do it. Mm. And and do you favour rhyme or spoken word, or you um, know, do you have a particular favourite form of poetry? I think I'm still I'm still experimenting with what I really enjoy, but I I do use rhyme sporadically in what I use. But I'm generally, I guess, with, because for me, like when I'm writing a poem, it's always like trying to suggest or strive for a kind of connection, a kind of order that. It just is like it's hard to find and that's through the poem i'm trying to find it so there's mm. like, i connect rhyming words sporadically i haven't yet really experimented with a fully rhymed regimented poem just because i haven't tried it but i definitely mm. put rhyme and a lot of alliteration a lot of um assonance whatever and i use i'm very big on altering meaning through on genre and punctuation um just to like slightly gear meaning and just put subtle hints in there but mm-hmm. i think it um in terms of spoken word i haven't actually tried reading my poems aloud that much and reading this made me think that like yeah the the way i write is quite oracular and i think um it is probably it should be read aloud but um, mm. i'm just i'm early i'm in a happy ex- like try everything phase right now i'm not cynical yet um yeah i think it's lovely that poetry does get read aloud and since i've been doing these shows I've found out, you know, that there are so many different poetry groups around the world. And, you know, obviously during lockdown, a lot have been online, but there are some starting up again in person, um, you know, and, you know, I had no idea before I started doing these shows that that there's this whole world of poetry out there, which is is incredible. So um, I'm learning as well. So that's good. But uh, yeah, so... Now I have I did mention to people about the book, um, yeah. so I'm hoping that you will agree to have your poem in the book because oh, I think it's to. beautiful. So, yeah. And um, see, so we're just getting. I know you haven't been on all this time, but we're just getting to about nearly half past seven. So I normally keep it to about half an hour. So, yeah. but I really hope that you will come back on the show again, mm. um, and uh, hope that you've enjoyed. What you could tonight yeah um apart from the techie bits but yeah it well, happens life it happens does, yeah you know so there's no point worrying about it we just get on with it um, exactly so i'm hoping that you will come back and join me for another session i'd love to and uh we'll do another we will uh poem another painting yeah um, it's, it's a new term to be poemed be poem. um, lovely yeah and um, so that would be great and uh, so next week i'll be back with another fabulous poet hopefully no techie issues um i say it happens um coming to join me for more talk about poetry and painting so i hope you'll be able to join me again for that next wednesday at 7 p.m uk time live here on facebook and uh thank you for watching in thank you martin and anybody else who's been watching it doesn't actually tell me who's watching sorry Um, unless you put a comment so stay safe have a good week and hopefully see you next wednesday for another poetry painting session so for now it's bye for now from oscar and myself thank you bye everybody bye bye